Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. A new task force is being touted as Tasmania's best chance yet to secure a long-awaited AFL team of its own. Bringing in the big guns, the latest attempt will be backed by the co-founder of Virgin Airlines and receiving tripartisan support. Swapping the political arena for the footy field. In a rare move, the state's leaders have joined forces in the latest effort to secure a Tasmanian AFL team. What we're doing is exactly what the AFL demanded of us, is to get the right people around to build a business case, um, establish the, the, the necessary structures, do the financial due diligence. Virgin Airline co-founder Brett Godfrey today dedicating his time to getting the long-held ambition off the ground, working from the grassroots level up, aiming to have a new match fit proposal ready in the next six months. It's when the opportunity presents um, that we are the next and top of the list to participate in the AFL. It's terrific to see the calibre of the talent of the task force who together I know will be able to put forward a very strong case for Tasmania to ensure that we have the very best chance of securing an AFL team for our state. The task force one of many forms throughout the years, so far with no luck. I believe we can get there, but we just need to be able to prove it to everyone, including you, that, that you know, we're, we're not just here for a, a PR stunt. We're here to make a difference, and, and that's why we're, we're investing our time and effort in it. It's not often our politicians all agree. United over football, but failing to work together on most other issues. Even as the state's hospitals continue to struggle and the housing crisis forces many Tasmanians into homelessness. If political parties are keen to help us with any number of issues, whether it be getting a team of our own or improving our health system, of course they're welcome to join and that's why we've invited them to the upcoming health forum. I think it's a really good sign that we can work together on important issues uh, and we have in the past on issues like family violence for example, so let's see some more of it. But only time will tell if this new cheer squad will boost Tasmania's chances of a win. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. A coroner probing the Mount Lyle mine deaths will be allowed to see several pieces of controversial evidence. An inquest was examining the 2014 death of Michael Welsh due to a mud rush at the mine. Lawyers for Copper Mines of Tasmania challenged the admissibility of an expert report into the incident. The Chief Justice described the report as failing to distinguish facts from opinions, but said different rules of evidence apply to the coroner. The full court ruling the coroner can receive the evidence to help find how the death happened and avoid future deaths. Two 16-year-old males have been charged following an alleged evade across Hobart's eastern shore this morning. Around 8am, police allege a red lancer started evading officers on the East Derwent Highway and into Risdon Vale. Police say a large number of vehicles swarmed the area using the Westpac rescue helicopter and road spikes to intercept the car. Anyone with information on the incident is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Emergency crews have managed to rescue a pet dog from a fire which completely destroyed an Olveston unit this afternoon. Investigators say an oily rag ignited after an occupant accidentally dropped hot metal when welding. This home may be destroyed, but this dog is full of life, thanks to persistent fire crews refusing to give up on her, finding little Lizzie hiding under a bed. It took a while to get the dog, it took about 10 minutes to find the dog in the premises, so animals will go very low and obviously move themselves from the smoke. So it took a while to find the dog, but very happy to find it in a safe condition. Lizzie's owners now relieved their beloved pet made it out alive, but remained devastated after losing all of their possessions. Got nothing at the moment. I don't think the shock's hit me yet. Every time I look in the door and think, oh, all them photos and... Look in the garage and my tools are all gone. Investigators say one of the occupants was welding and dropped a piece of hot metal onto oily rags in the garage. The inferno then rapidly spreading throughout the property. Uh, the damage to the garage is, is fully extensive, all the roof area and smoke and uh, water damage to the rest of the premises. With the next door unit in such close proximity, fire crews managed to stop the blaze from spreading with only minimal damage caused. 
Yes, the initial response that was quite difficult with uh, two houses potentially being um, on fire, so we did have to work quite extensively and quickly to get that under control. The damage is estimated at $250,000. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. A doctor who worked in Tasmania for two years has today been suspended over a series of racist and misogynistic online comments. Christopher Kwan Chen Lee worked at the Royal Hobart and Launceston General Hospitals until 2018. Earlier this year, he was found guilty of professional misconduct after making comments on internet forums, including saying some women deserve to be raped. The Medical Board of Australia said it chose to take the action so the public can maintain confidence in the medical profession. Mona Fever is in the air, with the museum unveiling its latest exhibition, one designed to get people thinking. The work, called Mine, is a modern take on data mining, using a board game from the 1960s to tell the story. Enter this room and be greeted with Mona's newest exhibition. This white cage representing what its artist says is a patent filed by Amazon in 2016. A piece said to be representing our modern world. They never actually made this thing, but it's sort of literally a human cage for a worker to work in among robots. Use the O device and hear the call of a critically endangered bird, the King Island ground thornbill, gained through collaboration with ANU researchers. Very few photographs of this bird, so just being able to refine that properly um, with them was you know, one of the highlights of working through this show. The artist, Simon Denny, is from New Zealand who lives and works in Berlin. He's interested in technology and its relationship with society. I became interested in both resource and data mining because I saw it as uh, an urgent moment um, for the planet where we have to kind of look at the way that we interact with people and resources. That interest plays out in this exhibition. Enter the second room and step into a giant game called Extraction. The room's modelled on a 1960s board game called Squatters, based on sheep farming. So it's this idea that we're kind of now resources uh, to be turned into data. It looks fun and colourful, but it has a deeper message about humans and our data being used as commodities. Yeah, I think the bright board and the big sculptures drive the message home in a really fun way and a very clear way. These trigger points around different parts of the museum allow visitors to scan the codes to experience augmented reality. I felt like to have a mixed reality experience was really important to the themes of the exhibition, to make you think about the device in your hand. And next door, from men in suits to children playing Game Boys, these sculptures represent a modern workforce. They're on a raised platform and that platform is hiding underneath it all of the data that we are constantly collecting on each other in the world and you'll be able to explore that data using the AR. The exhibition officially opens to visitors tomorrow and will run until April next year. And while the mine exhibition opens tomorrow, there is an opportunity to experience some of the festival fever tonight with Dark Mofo underway. Our reporter Louise Hedger is at TMAG now with another exhibition. Good evening, Lou. I understand the doors have only just opened. That's right, Joe. The doors opened up about 15 minutes ago. There was a massive group of people waiting out the front. They've all streamed in now to catch the first glimpse of this exhibition. It's the first one that's opened up for this year's Dark Mofo, so it's very exciting. The exhibition's called Tense Past. It's by a Tasmanian Aboriginal artist called Julie Goff. It's focused on colonialism and the impacts that that's had on Tasmania's Aboriginal peoples uh, then and now. The exhibition includes sculptures, sounds and artefacts, some which have been borrowed from different collections around the country. And Joe Dark Mofo has well and truly taken over our city. So for the next couple of weeks there will be lots of events on. So it's time to rug up and head on down to get involved. Absolutely, you wouldn't want to miss it. Thank you very much for that, Lou. Louise Hedger joining us there from TMAG. Critics of the proposed Gorge Hotel in Launceston say they will continue to fight the local council as its development application is re-advertised for the third time. Opponents say the project is too tall, does not suit the character of the local area and is at risk of seismic activity. It sits between two seismic fault lines 
on a plateau that has 250 metres of mud. The Launceston City Council says it has received 38 representations and all were invited to a meeting last night. BirdLife Tasmania is calling for tougher penalties for dog owners following a recent spike in penguin deaths across the state. The wildlife body today welcoming a review into the Dog Control Act for Tasmania as breeding season fast approaches. The increase in the dog attacks on penguins is uh, a clear signal that we've needed to do something about the Dog Control Act for a number of years. Dog owners aren't taking control, aren't taking responsibility for their pets. Around 160 penguins have reportedly been killed by dogs. Launceston's Albert Hall has come alive with treasures of the past as the 20th annual Antiques Fair opens its doors tonight. Featuring 19 Tasmanian business stalls and four from interstate, they'll be showcasing historical pieces from across the world this long weekend. There's a great range of gear here from antiquarian books, paintings, jewellery, French, English, Australian furniture, decorative arts. The Tasmanian Antiques Fair runs until Monday. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local not-for-profit Tasmanian super fund. The ASX has closed higher for a fourth straight day to finish the week up 0.7%. The ASX 200 index rose 60.9 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 69.7 US cents and 61.88 euro cents. A poor start costs the Southern Huskies overnight, with the side going down to the Canterbury Rams by 16 points. It sparked some soul-searching ahead of a rematch tomorrow night. It was a disappointing night for the Southern Huskies from the start, with an 11-point deficit at the first break, extending to 16 by the final buzzer. Jalen Billups was the top scorer in offence, and he'll need to be on his game again if the Huskies have any chance of turning it around tomorrow night at the Silverdome. It's no more excuses at this point, like we, we know what we need to do and you know, we're going to get it done. The post-mortem after last night's loss wasn't pretty. We're anxious to get back on the court, man. It wasn't, it wasn't acceptable. We'll be looking for some payback for sure. But one thing which isn't lacking is team morale. We're all goofballs. It's like I just enjoy this team in general. And Mason Bragg says the league's high standard keeps challenging and lifting his game. But if the Bernie product could have one more wish, it would be the Huskies going even further north to Olverston for a match one day down the track. If you look at the um, coastal competition up there, it's, um, it's really highly competitive and you get a lot of people coming out to the game. So I think if we could get a game up in Olverston, it'd be great to see. Before then, though, we'll have crowned the next Laco Seljak Cup champion. Monday's showdown between the Devonport Strikers and South Hobart will be the second time in three years the pair has faced off in the decider. And the Strikers won both times. Those finals probably hurt us and not qualifying last year was a was a dampener on our season. So hopefully this year it's our year and we take it with both hands. We really do want to win this one um, because it is special. And Zoe Crawford will co-captain the Southern Football League when it takes on the best of the NTFAW tomorrow. She's dropped back from the TSLW after a knee reconstruction but will come up against some old rivals from the league. There are a few girls that I know up there. They play it uh, pretty tight, contested footy. Um, they're bigger bodies than us, so we're just going to try and use a bit of run and carry. It's really lovely to go out and play with some amazing talent that we have in the SFL and hopefully give the Northern team a bit of a rough up this year. Hopefully there's a heap of women that come along, watch and think, oh yeah, I can do that, or, you know, that looks like a bit of fun, and yeah, it is. It's on at 3.15 at Invermay Park tomorrow, straight after the men's match. Good evening. Lake Leaks minus four the low last night, while St Helens posted our high of 18 degrees. Hobart 17 today, Launceston, Burnie and Devonport 15. Just a few light showers over the west, otherwise fine, with most temperatures sitting just above average. Campania and Bushy Park 17. Friendly Beaches, Grove and Ooze 16. Low Head and the Islands 14. Lyawini and Strawn 13 degrees. Low level cloud found its way over the west, far south and parts of the north today. A little bit of high-level cirrus is in the mix over the southwest of the state. A cloud band with the front is over the bight and extends back to Western Australia. An upper trough produced the cloud streaming over the tropics and over northern Queensland. Tomorrow, a high over southeast Australia is moving to the east. Cold fronts are taking positions over the bight and further west. A trough lies over inland Queensland tomorrow. Winds northwestly at 15 to 25 knots, reaching 30 knots over the south and west, swells to three and a half metres in southern waters. 
A strong wind warning for waters between Tasman Island and Sandy Cape and over the east from St Helens Point to Wineglass Bay. We also have a small craft wind alert for the southwest lakes. Saturday for Hobart, a sunny one and 16 degrees, 13 for Maydina, uh, an early frost for Oatlands but partly cloudy in the afternoon, a top of 12. Launceston 15 and partly cloudy, Devonport 15 as well, a minus 3 start for Liawini but a sunny afternoon. 15 for Burnie and partly cloudy, maybe a light shower again for Strawn, 14 the top, 14 also for Marawar. St Helens 16 degrees and partly cloudy, OK for Swansea, 16 as well, 15 for Orford. On Sunday, light showers over the west and north increasing from the northwest later. Rain on Monday more frequent over the north and west and a few showers on Tuesday over the west, far south and north but fine over the east. Showers increasing over Perth tomorrow, sunny in Adelaide and Melbourne, partly cloudy in Sydney and a few showers and 21 degrees in Brisbane. 11 and partly cloudy in Hobart, 9 in Launceston and Clear, Devonport 11 and Clear. Joe, I've got a long weekend off. I will see you Tuesday. Yes, will you enjoy your long weekend, Murph? All right, that's all from the team for now and have a lovely evening. We'll see you with updates a little bit later. Bye for now.